Since this webinar focuses on injection molding, many of the topics covered today will pertain to technicians, die setters, engineers, and maintenance. To begin our discussion today, covering 10 procedures to fine tune any process, we will discuss establishing fill, establishing gate seal, establishing cushion, melt temperature, temperature profiling, track tacking temperature, heater band monitoring, nozzle sizing, material preparation, housekeeping, and at the end present a special offer and then answer questions and answers in the last segment. Proper fill establishment is critical to any injection molding process. Many injection molders we visit have no formal procedure to establish a proper fill. Furthermore, documentation of the fill is very seldom documented. Unless you have a molding machine with an open loop process control system, you should always use velocity controlled injection, transfer via screw position, and fill ends at 95% full. Viscosity controlled injection is critical to maintaining a robust or, ro or maintaining any injection molding process. All variations in injection fill rate cause variations in shear rate, viscosity, orientation, and so on. The first desired stage fill rate is entered into the microprocessor controlling the injection molding machine. The machine will adjust the hydraulic pressure to maintain the desired fill rate. As long as enough injection pressure is available for injection, a properly functioning machine will maintain the desired injection flow rate. Keep in mind electric molding machines do not use hydraulic pressure but a maximum injection pressure is also entered similarly to hydraulic machines. The transfer from velocity controlled first stage to pressure controlled second stage should be done by screw position. This is the best way to separate or decouple the first stage fill from the second stage pack. This separation is actually much of the foundation behind what is known as decoupled or scientific molding. A robust injection molding process must not be completely full at the end of first stage fill. The best way to determine this is to weigh and document the part weight at the end of first stage. Lastly, ensure that you document the first stage fill time along with the part weight. This improves your ability to repeat the process whenever possible. When establishing second stage time, it is critical that you perform a gate seal study. Although this may seem complicated, it involves the generation of a graph comparing the final part weight versus second stage time. The only piece of equipment necessary to conduct this test is a scale. To conduct the gate seal test and determine appropriate second stage time, establish proper fill, minimal second stage time, mold and record, part weight, second stage time, increase second stage time, and then repeat. When plotting data, you should generate a curved trend line to approximate the behavior of the polymer. As you can see here, a trend line does not pass through every data point, but resembles the data that has been plotted. When interpreting the data, the two points on either side of the data stabilization is the time of gate seal. In this example, 
the gate seals between five and six seconds. As a result, seven seconds is chosen for the optimal second stage time. This will ensure that the gate is properly sealed when material variations occur, but material and energy is not wasted by excessive packing. Cushion is the forwardmost point of screw travel during the fill, pack, and hold process. Surprisingly, very few companies pay attention to the cushion size of their process. Other companies have a general rule for cushion size regardless of the barrel or shot size. In most cases, the cushion size should be 5 to 10 percent of the overall shot size. What this means is if the screw starts injection at a position of 100 millimeters, the cushion should be 5 to 10 millimeters. We refer to a cushion range because different applications require different cushion sizes. We will discuss some of these cases in the next couple of slides. Commodity molding of materials such as polyethylene, polystyrene, and PVC can usually be molded with a 10% cushion size to, to accommodate for things like material variance, machine variability, multi-cavity mold fill imbalance, and regrind variation. High precision molding applications usually use engineering materials such as polycarbonate, polysulfone, and nylon. These processes tend to run best with a smaller cushion, closer to 5% to better control the process and minimize barrel residence time. When running such a small cushion, it's important to check the cushion size routinely especially during color, regrind, and lot changes. The point here is you'll always need a cushion or you'll have a process that is out of control. Also, the idea of keeping the cushion small is so that the material does not freeze off in the nozzle. Plastic materials with narrow melting range such as nylon, polyester, or acetale need small cushions so they do not freeze off and so the cushion can do its job by allowing enough plastic molecules to pack the part. Always ensure you know where the screw bottoms out. When possible, zero out the screw position. Document this position on the machine's exterior. Test this every time the machine is maintained. Our industry has a strong aversion to real data. Most of the injection molders do not use scales to weigh their parts, nor do they use pyrometer to measure their melt temperature. If you do not use a pyrometer to measure the melt temperature, you'll never know the actual temperature of your polymer. In the next couple of slides, we'll discuss pyrometers, temperature measurement techniques, and safety when handling polymer melts. There are a variety of probes available and you should choose one that is accurate to at least one degree. Uses a thin probe like typically like the one we're being, that's being shown. A common temperature measurement is the 30-30 method. This method works by first set the barrel temperatures slowly preheat the probe if necessary, purge the material and insert the temperature probe, wait 30 seconds before taking the temperature. Keep in mind these are just general rules. Some materials will cool quickly and many probes act faster than 30 seconds. As a result you can quickly create a procedure which will work best for your materials and equipment. 